It's like it's. I mean, it's not perfect, perfectly full mode, but it's fine. Okay. I can't even remember what I said now, man. <laughs> Take two. Right. Welcome. This is going to be my ultimate SOD freeze guide for people of all levels of experience. So we're going to go from people who are basically first time WoW all the way down to experts on priest and everything in between. And each sort of time we level up, it's going to get a little bit more advanced. There's going to be a bit more stuff to take into account, a bit more stuff to focus on that's more advanced. So if you're very new, you don't need to go all the way down. You can you can briefly you know gloss over it and stuff like that. But I wouldn't be focusing on that sort of stuff. It's going to give you things to focus on for your skill level. And once you've kind of got to grips with that, you can move to the next stage and start, you know, unlocking, uh, unlocking, unlocking some more, you know, attributes and skills uh, elements to the class. So it's kind of divvied up in that regard because there's so much to priest. And if you are new to the to to the class or the you know the spec, it's quite daunting to try and take in everything at once. It's it's a lot. So that's why I've sort of broken up in this way. Uh, but keep in mind that everything further down, like if you're on tier four or whatever that doesn't mean ignore level one there's still stuff in level one that is going to be useful for you it's just like adding to it if that makes sense hi youtube okay <laughs> so we're going to start off with level one child this is if you're the, this is like literally your first time wow you've decided to play priest we're going for runes first of all sod is is your pick and you're going for runes right so you're going to be leveling up and you might be like oh what, what runes do i want to go for leveling up you want to try and go for penance void plague and homunculi and you can just go to Wowhead and figure out where to get these from. This guide doesn't really include that. But they're, they're, it's, it's easy to find and they're relatively easy to pick up. And th the way that you're going to level up with these is you're going to prioritize using these spells. We're going to talk a lot about that a little bit more later. But these are going to be your, like, your primary damage buttons that you're going to be pushing. So your talents as you level up is going to look roughly like this. So Spirit Tap into one spec, Healing Focus, and then Blackout. And the talents are handy, but they're not the be-all and end-all because the runes are so strong in SOD. So it's nice to, to have them, but it's it's not the thing that's going to you know, define you. Uh, as you level up, you're going to want to pick up gear with specific stats on. Primarily intellect and spirit is going to help you have a little bit more longevity. And then as you get a little bit higher, there's going to be gear with damage on and potentially shadow damage. And this is going to help you just kill stuff faster, basically. the as, as you get higher, the regen is a little bit less important and the damage is more important just because you have spirit tap. And it's going to help you out a lot in the regen department. And plus your wand is officially free as well. When you get a bit higher, there's going to be some dungeons. And in SOD, prayer of mending and penance are very strong. Make sure you pick up the prayer of mending rune as well uh, when you get a chance. This is going to help you out a lot. And I do recommend you do try and do a couple of dungeons while you're leveling up. It's going to teach you about just healing in general, healing people in general. It's going to be a different sort of playstyle to just killing stuff, leveling up in general. And it's going to prepare you for when you get to level 25. And you're going to want to start running things like BFD. If you haven't healed before, you're going to be very uh, overwhelmed by it. So definitely look to do a couple of dungeons. There's a few items in there as well that are very nice as a sort of pre-raid bis piece. So I recommend doing this. But yeah, if you're overwhelmed and you're not sure how to heal, just make sure you're using prayer, prayer of mending and penance on cooldown. And then you can just mess around with the other parts of the kit and, and sort of feel your way around, see what you like and you know learn the kit damage so you're as we talked about this a little bit earlier the the spells you're going to be mostly using for damage is void plague and penance and the rotation is literally just you void plague something you penance and then you wand after the the, the penance and if there's some mobs with a little bit higher hp they're going to be a little bit tankier you can throw in a mind blast as well uh, potentially at the start or, or between the void plague and the penance you want to finish with the penance and then wand usually uh, you can also throw a shadow of pain on if it's a particularly tanky mob now sometimes you're gonna be worried your character's gonna die you might have maybe over pulled somebody might be attacking you these kind of things if you're leveling up most likely there won't be that much pvp but if you've rolled on a pvp server it can happen at higher levels so i think the main thing while you're leveling up if you're very new to the game just get comfortable with moving your character around if you over pull, get comfortable running away. Don't panic, these kind of things. But also make sure you're having your key, your, your abilities key bound. Don't be clicking stuff. Don't be that guy. No one likes that guy. A uh, couple of tips. Make sure you pick up the lesser magic wand and the greater magic wand as soon as you can. You can grab these from the auction house uh, or you can get a friend to bring them if they've already been playing the game a little bit. They got some gold. And these ones are much better than everything else available in terms of wands. And this is gonna help you level up a lot easier. The runes are pretty good, and the runes do a lot of the stuff, you know, in the first sort of 10 levels. The, the runes are very strong, but they do fall off a little bit as you get a bit higher. And so if you've got a really bad wand, it's going to be a lot more painful than if you get one of these. 
So the lesser magic wand is available from five and the greater is available from 13. Next is level two. So this is if you're a first time priest or PVP, -er, but you've maybe played the game a little bit before on other classes. You've done some PVE, that kind of thing. So you want to pick up the Void Plague, Prayer of Mending and Penance Runes, and you're going to be running those for both PVP and PVE. And your talents are going to look like this. You're going to run five ones, two out of two in four, three out of three in shield, one out of one in a focus, three out of three meditation, and two out of two healing focus. And this build you can use, it's a nice build for a beginner priest because you can use it for both both types of content and you won't have to keep respecking all the time and wasting your silver. When you're not really too sure what you're doing, you don't want to be respecking and messing about with that all the time. As long as you've got something that's pretty solid, then you're good to go. So this spec is pretty solid all around. It's not the best in any regard, but it works all around and you won't, it, will, it will save you from wasting gold, basically. Uh, as for stats for PvP, you want to try and pick up stuff with stamina intellect. So if you find some items with high stamina and, and intellect on, hold on to it. It's going to be handy. Usually the green gear will be called of the eagle. Uh, for PvE, you want to be looking to get bonus healing, intellect and spirit on the gear. And the the more advanced you get, the more bonus healing you can look to, to go for. If you're a little bit less advanced or your group is a little bit less advanced, you might need more, a bit more intellect and spirit as the fights are going to be a little bit longer. So you want more mana to deal with that. When you are healing, again, use prayer of mending and penance whenever possible. If, if people aren't topped, if people are, if everyone's topped, you can just chill. Uh, if extra healing is needed, right? So if people are still dying after you've done this uh, and it's they're not, they're, they're taking a little bit of damage, but they're not actually going to die, then you can use the spell heal. And this is your next most efficient spell. If somebody's literally going to die, they're on like 20%. It's looking like they're, you know, they're in a lot of trouble. They've taken a lot of damage in a short period of time. And your prayer of mending and penance are both still a little bit away away. Then this is where you can use either the power word shield or the flash shield. And these are more expensive spells, but they are more emergency tailored parts of your kit. As for damage, you want to prioritize void plague. This is going to be your highest damage per mana and PS yes spell. Very good spell. Uh, and then shadowed pain. And then if you get a little bit more time to cast, you can go for a Mind Blast. If no one's hitting you or, you know, it's PvE, for example. Uh, and then Wanding. Usually, it's going to feel like, you. oh, you want to go for like a, a cheeky offensive penance to do uh, a bit more pressure. This can be good sometimes, but I recommend, if you're not that experienced, to try and save this defensively as it can it can bite you in the ass sometimes. If you used it offensively, you don't have it. And then, you know, you somebody gets a lot of burst damage or you get a lot of burst damage and then you're like, oh, no. I've wasted my penance now. Uh, and then you have to start using flash heals, panic heals, these kind of things. And it just gets hairy really quickly. So that's why I'm recommending until you're a bit more experienced, try and save that defensively. Survival. So if you are getting attacked in PVPs, you're max level now, you're maybe doing the occasional BG or you're getting attacked in the world. The way that you're going to try to survive is you're going to start with a penance. You're going to go for a pom. Uh, then you're going to go for a shield, then put a renew up. And then after that flash heal and basically rinse and repeat. You're also going to try and use your fear really early because this is going to force the enemy to either use their trinket or racial to, to get out of it. And your goal is basically to get to the second fear. If you get to the second fear, everything's fine. A uh, couple of tips. So understanding the five second rule is important on priest. So the way that the five second rule works, and, and you, you mostly at this point just want to know that it exists. But basically, when you cast a spell that uses mana, all of your regen from your spirit stops. It doesn't do anything anymore. And... This, hap this, this occurs for five seconds after you've cast. While you're leveling up, you want to keep this in mind because what this means for you is that in the last few seconds of killing the mob, you don't really want to be casting and using mana because when you kill that mob, you're going to get a spirit tap proc. And what spirit tap does is doubles your spirit. So you really want to try and maximize the value of this, right? So if you're casting while the spirit tap is, is up, the buff is up, then you're going to be losing this mana regen that you've gained from, from spirit tap. So this is why you want to try and finish the mob of wand. One thing to note, if you are running meditation really quickly, I think it's a little side note, uh, you will be running meditation, right? This is partially assisting with the spirit regen so that even though your spirit regen is paused, you'll still get that little bit, the 15% of it uh, while casting. So a little, little side note. Uh, and then, yeah, use this macro. This will help you a lot. Cast, shoot. This is going to stop you cancelling wand if you spam the button. So a very handy macro here. Next up, we've got college student. Experience, but not on priest. So you've probably played, I don't know, warrior or rogue or whatever. And you're deciding, you know what, priest looks pretty fun in SOD, I'm going to give it a go. So this is this is the section for you. And in addition to everything else we've already talked about, you can keep in mind that you can actually swap out your, your prayer of mending for homunculi. And you can do this in PvE, you can do this in world PvP. Uh, and you can do this in jewels. That's the, the main places I recommend doing it. 
and in pve if you've got quite a confident group you're going through the content you've cleared it a few times you you know you know the bosses you can actually help your group clear it quicker by switching to to homunculi on certain bosses where you don't need as much healing and this is obviously a little bit personal preference and taste and, and you know depends how you feel on the boss but if you do this your your melee dps will thank you because they're going to do a bunch more damage to the boss and it will save any warriors having to actually sunder the boss so definitely a little min max min max tips for pve uh, in world pvp if you're on your own homunculi is significantly better than prayer of mending so i high, high, wholeheartedly recommend using it there and in duels as well the it's, it's basically an, an extra dot that also pushes casts back so you can cause a lot of problems for the other player using this and it's very good defensively as well it's reducing melee uh attack speed uh, and damage partially so definitely a worth pickup for those those uh, types of content as for talents you can go for a more regen focused spec in bfd if you really want to min max for that or you can go for a region focus spec in bgs if you really want to go for that and this is going to be a little bit better on horde than it is on alliance because it runs unbreakable will later phases it will probably be good on both uh factions but at the moment horde has more stuns to deal with due to paladins and having hodge whereas rogues don't have that many stuns just yet so the unbreakable will is a little bit less valuable if you're an alliance player as for world pvp you're going to want to spec something like this and the the main difference here is that you're going to be picking up spirit tap and this is really nice in world pvp due to the amount of kills that you're going to pick up every time you get a kill you're going to get a significant portion of your mana back due to the tap uh blackout obviously is very very nice in terms of controlling enemy players if you get a proc you pretty much you get a significant amount of pressure in the fight i would say um so this is a really nice one and then ones are quite strong uh, currently at the level 25 a's this will likely change down the line uh, and i will add new specs in for higher levels uh, as for stats you're going to want to pick up at least 3% hit. Now, this is quite tricky to do at 25, but your boon from Black Fathom will actually give you 3%, plus the epic boots are going to give you 1%. So you should have more than enough, as long as you don't die. If you die, then you're going to be a little bit under hit cap on Loco. It's the, the TLDR. Hopefully, the, the gear in later phases is going to have a bit more hit. In terms of general knowledge, the, the conversions are basically one stamina is worth 10 HP, one intellect is worth 15 mana, and 10 spirit is worth about one mp5 but that's while not casting remember if you're if you're casting then the spirit is reduced to zero uh or near zero depending on if you have meditation when you are healing with prayer of mend uh, a little bit of prayer of mending and penance you can also use renew to bounce the prayer of mending now keep in mind that in sod prayer of mending doesn't just proc from damage it also procs from healing so by buffing renew on players that the prayer of mending bounces to you can actually continue the bounce on even if they don't take any more damage from another source. And this is going to allow you to get full value out of your prayer mending as much as possible. So generally the way that you heal is going to be pressing your palm, your penance on CD. And then in between you're going to be looking to bounce it with renews. Uh, as for doing damage, once your dots are applied, you can want to try and keep distance between yourself and your enemy. This is mostly for PvP. And penance can be used offensively if you're confident that you're safe. All right, you're a little bit more experienced now. So you can actually greed some offensive penances potentially. But you need to kind of know whether the enemy can kill you or not, right? Are they going to be able to connect? Are they going to be able to pressure you? Are you going to need to use the healing? These are the things you obviously need to keep in mind. So now is the time to sort of experiment a little bit more with it now that you're more experienced. But yeah, understand or try to understand if you get punished for it. Generally, Smite and Holy Fire don't get used that much. There are some very niche situations, but a lot of the time the wand is actually uh, a pretty good filler due to the fact that it's free. Uh, and you won't be in the five second rule when you're when you're using it. It doesn't cost any mana, so you can actually regen as well while using it. So the the wand is actually very strong at level twenty five. As for survival, next we're going to look at positioning, and in raid, pretty self explanatory. Positioning is mostly about avoiding ground effects or boss AOE. Pretty much the same as any other class. Don't stand in fire. The use. But if you're doing BGs, you want to make sure you're positioning so that you're the maximum distance away from the, the the middle zerg where the general fight is happening you want to be you know that 40 yards back you've got big range on your heels you need to use it and this is going to make you a lot harder to either cc from like mages or warlocks they have to really push in if they want to get cc on you so they're really going to be reluctant to do that and if they do go for it then they're putting themselves at a lot of risk and potentially your team can kill them. and then for melee trying to get on you you know warriors rogues palas these kind of things they have to now push through your whole front line 
all the way to the back where they can either get CC'd or killed themselves because they're outranging their healers. So this is going to be your biggest way of surviving in BGs. All about positioning. This is your biggest defense. So if you if you find yourself dying a lot, just think, like, did I over push? Did I do some crazy push to try and get a fear? You know, am I overextending to try and heal some crazy warrior that went into their back line and had no idea what he was doing? Like, let him die. Just let him. It's fine. It's all about positioning. You need to stay alive. You're the most valuable person in the fight. In world PvP, you want to always be running away. So if you know that there are other players coming or you're fighting a player, run away from him constantly. You have dots. The dots are very, very strong. The longer your fight goes on, the more these dots are going to do damage and the more likely it is that you kill the person. So the longer you make it take for him to get to you, the less you actually have to heal yourself and the more you can just run, pressure him, do damage, maybe wand. Uh, and, and your fear is all that time going to be coming back up. So time is your friend, basically. Uh, a couple of tips. You can... So this is a little little wand tech for you, but basically if you, if you start casting your wand, if you press the wand button between the second and the third tick of the penance going off, there's some weird interaction where the wand will actually there's less wind up on the wand basically if you if you wind up uh, if you wander after a spell normally there's some weird cast time wind up thing if you try it after a mind blast you'll see but if you do it in this last two thirds of a penance cast the the, op, the wand often just flies straight out right afterwards and there's no real weird wind up so this is going to give you basically extra dps and in terms of efficiency this is your efficiency order for your heals so you want to prioritize pom five ticks so if you know that the pom is going to bounce a lot bang that out on cooldown next up is going to be penance and the penance obviously is a better single target heal overall but yeah this is if you're looking to be as efficient as possible this is what you want to go for next and then after that is going to be the heal then after that is renew assuming you have some bonus healing if not then it's going to be about the same as a flash next is going to be the pom one tick then flash and then shield is going to be your least efficient spell that you can possibly push so this is why we were talking about earlier about how shield is this very very much an emergency button to push this is going to change a little bit at level 40 and beyond because the Mortal Strike effect is going to start being a problem. And what this is going to do is it's going to half the efficiency of everything except shield. Shield doesn't get affected by Mortal Strike effects. So what this means is shield is going to be way more of a priority from 40 onwards. And we're going to talk about that later uh, at a later date. Uh, we'll do some adjustments to the guide when it's relevant. Uh, level four, grad student. And this is if this is for the ones that are, are experienced on priest and they maybe just want to pick up a few more tips or bits of info. Uh, it might not all be something you haven't seen before. It might not all be relevant to you, but it's uh, it's it's more advanced stuff. Didn't fit in the previous previous uh, tier. So we're going to be talking about the throughput focused BFD spec, and this is going to include holy specialization. And this is going to be for those who really want to get the most out of their healing. They're, they're pretty confident doing the raid. Everything's feeling cool. And they want to maybe do like a nice pass. Or they want to maybe solo run it. Something like this. The Holy Specialization is going to make the POM and the Penance crit. So they're overall going to do a bit more healing with it. Uh, they're not too worried about their region. So they've dropped meditation. And overall, they just want to want to pump out big heals. Next up, and this is a similar, similar thought process in the BGs. Here we go for the Unbreakable Will, and again, we've got the Divine Fury and Holy Specialization. This is going to allow for some heals in between the Pom and Penances, and the Poms and Penances are going to be uh, more likely to crit with that extra 5%. So overall, it's it's the only real spec that you can go at level 25 that actually buffs your, your healing. A couple of info, uh, bits of info about stats. So the formula for Spirit while casting with Meditation is this. Right, this, actually. This is the Meditation portion, for example. Obviously, the spirit is not going to do anything if you don't have meditation, so that will just be zero. And the formula for spirit while not casting, this is uh, this is the, in terms of MP5, by the way. This is uh, just straight up 13 plus spirit divided by four. Side note, you also gain 1% spell crit for every 59.2 intellect. So not only does the intellect give you mana, it gives you a little bit of spell crit. Ever so slight amount. Healing's next up. So when you're healing with POM and penance, you can obviously down rank using the, the Prayer of Mending rank 1, but you can also down rank with Lesser Heal. And the benefit of that is that it will t it, it will bounce the POM even if the target is topped, if it's full HP. If the, the target is full HP and the rank 1 Renew is overhealing, it will not bounce the Penance. So the Renew is better if they're not full HP and you're going to have to bounce a few times, because it obviously ticks a bunch of times. Whereas the Lesser Heal is better if you want to bounce it slightly faster, because it's a 1.5 second cast versus 3 second tick, or if they're full HP. Next up, survival, and we're going to talk about faking at this point. And a sneaky, sneaky bit of info, the penance currently doesn't show up on the default UI. So most people won't kick it. 
higher level people, more experienced people, they'll kick it. Most likely they have an add-on for it, but the default UI currently is not showing channels correctly. So you can get away with greeting a penance a lot of the time. Now, if you are a bit more experienced, you can try and gauge a little bit more by the way that the player plays, moves, uh, the stuff that they're using, uh, whether or not they are a high enough ability level player to actually interrupt it. That's kind of come down, comes down to, to your own perception of them. But this is kind of where it comes down to whether or not you're going to greed the penance, basically, or if you're going to go for like the one tick fake, these kind of things. Uh, you can also just go for the initial flash rather than the initial penance. If you think that, that it, you know, they're actually decent, they might actually kick you. You can go for the flash first and maybe try and fake it. And if you fake the kick on the flash, you're just chilling because you, you now have the option to do a full penance and they can't do anything about it. Maybe they can stun it if they're a rogue with the, the range stun, but this isn't, this isn't, often this isn't what they want to do because they'll have to do like a low combo point one or something like that. So it, it messes them up a little bit, causes some problems. A couple of tips, make sure, and this is more relevant for later tiers, but you want to shield after a mortal strike. The warrior uses mortal strike on you. Now's the time to shield basically. And the reason for this is usually once he's mortal strike, his rage will be low and the way that shield works with warriors is when they use their their melee attacks on shield and it gets absorbed they don't get rage so what warriors want to do is they want you to shield and then they want to see okay he shielded and now i hit my mortal strike now the shield is gone from the mortal strike and my next white attack goes on you and builds rage right so this doing this actually denies warriors loads of rage and reduces their damage on you a lot so this is going to be this is going to be an important thing at the 40 phase next tip uh, spirit is very 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 strong as long as you are aware of it and the way it works so basically if you if you kill someone and you can greed potentially wanding not attacking just chilling kiting these kind of things you're going to get significantly more mana from it and this is very very important in world, world pvp you know if you can maximize the amount of mana you're getting back from spirit tap priest is probably one of the 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 most uh, mana pressed classes in the game it is a problem for us and we'll see maybe we'll get some runes from it in the next tier that help us out with the mana a bit but until then this is something that you can really do to sort of mitigate that that issue uh, and the last tip is actually a pretty important one but in vanilla wow the, the the damage over time effects they only use one tenth of the target's resistance score so if you're putting shadowed pain or void plague up on someone and they have 40 shadow res the dot only cares about four shadow res so you have much less of a chance to to get any sort of resists as a result of that next up we've got some spell coefficients and i'm not going to read all these out but this is a nice table in terms of uh, knowledge uh, you can refer back to this if you are trying to do any sort of theory crafting um, and understanding of the way you know spells work what's what's worth it and and how much an item is going to actually benefit you and here we've also got the the healing efficiency if a healing efficiency breakdown this actually can go uh I'll, I'll edit this later but we've moved this now into tables and this will but this basically shows you and we've, we've ordered it on on the 100 damage but basically void plague is the most dps going down to holy fire which is the least dps and then you can also compare their damage per mana values and things like that and we've got it for zero and 100 damage which is pretty much you know the maximum you're going to have without boon at level 25 I'll probably do another table for this at level 40 so that you can see how it differs because obviously with new ranks and new spell power amounts, this is going to vary. So we're on to level five, the last last level. And this is the expert tier and we're getting on to the, the more advanced stuff now or well, the very advanced stuff now. But basically, we're going to talk about rune swapping a little bit here. And you can swap penance out for death or pom out for homo homunculi. If you have two pairs of legs, for example, then this allows you to switch when you drop combat this allows you to switch runes much quicker than reapplying a rune onto that item because it's instant if you swap the item if you try to recast the rune it has a cast time and this is really really important if you are if you're pvping if you're dueling if anything like that because it's going to give you access to more potential spells you know if you're running penance for a duel and then you manage to get a fear on them drop combat swap to death and land like a mind blast death on them for, for example something like that you can really take advantage of, of you know the power of of the different runes in the different situations so definitely recommend trying to get for example two of each pair of legs and two of each pair of gloves a couple of different talent builds for 25 so you can you can go for the radical smite damage build which is five out of five holy spec four out of five spell warding to reduce the death damage on yourself five out of five divine fury one holy nova for trash basically just so you can get to one out of two searing light and this is going to probably be your highest dps uh build if you want to run it it's a lot of fun 
you're basically just sending your dots and then smiting for filler instead of wanding. Uh, for duels, you can run this spec, and this is going to be something that we're going to talk about shortly, but this is going to include 4 out of 5 shadow focus, uh, along with some standard stuff, basically. Uh, but we'll talk about that in a little bit, why the, the 4 out of 5 shadow focus, but this is a very good dueling build. This is what I'm using at the moment, personally, for dueling. So I recommend that one if you're if you're into dueling uh, and, and getting a little bit more deep into that rabbit hole. As for healing, you uh, a good tip is you can use spells that don't cost mana to stay out of the five second rule longer if needed during fights and pressure is either low or to regen extra. For example, when you've got the spirit tap up, things like that. So things like inner focus, if you're running it, make that spell not cost mana and that won't actually proc the five second rule. Uh, Desperate Prayer, same thing, doesn't cost mana, doesn't proc it, or Bandage, also doesn't proc it, it's not a spell. Uh, and this is, this is yeah, this is really important when you can feel the fight sort of is either in your control or is just slowing down, you're getting more of a kite off. And, and the main takeaway here is basically like try to cast your spells in groups so that you're outside of the five second rule, inside or whatever, you know, you're not regening mana for the smallest amount of time. You don't want to cast a bunch of spells and then wait a bit and your five seconds ticks down and then you cast something else and you start all over again. This way you're going to lose a bunch of regen, right? So you, you, if you cast it in groups, you're going to get more time outside of the uh, that five seconds. As for survival, the, the last survival tip, I guess, is, and, and this is probably on par i say i'd say it's on par with positioning but positioning can get really deep and advanced uh, and i haven't really covered that in the previous previous section but basically knowing what a real what what stuff in the world is actually real line of sight what things are going to block a spell what things aren't and this comes down to experience but there's there's that and there's knowing where those things are so if you're in a world pvp and you're like okay i know there's a house here i'm fighting in this place some more people turned up i really need some line of sight now let's kite towards that it's, it's kind of like a, a knowledge portion of the game that is uh, just like you either, either know it or you don't, right? You've either fought there before and taken advantage of it or you haven't. So these, these things are important and they can really make you or, or win or lose a fight, essentially. Uh, but they also exist in BGs. So like in Warsong, for example, the, the tree stumps and things like that aren't line. Whereas you can use the, the edge of the tunnel and stuff like that in the base to line spells. And this is pretty powerful, uh, causing people to over push, go into bad positions, these kind of things. And if you get into higher level games, that's actually going to be a very valuable tool. Uh, a couple of tips. Greeting an early penance when you're a high HP at the start of an enemy cast causes a lot of pushback and can even bait an interrupt, especially if it's a mage. So you've got to be very careful with this. This is something that you very much have to judge yourself and have to have experience in the dual matchup to, to kind of get a feel for when you can do this and when you can't. Because often the enemy player can go all in if they hit a CS and, or, you know, or any sort of kick. And if you are not in a situation where you can deal with that, you can just lose because of it. So this is very much an experience thing, but knowing that it's a possibility is, is valuable. And this is very much like a sort of a micro play that you can use to gain advantage or momentum in certain dual situations. Uh, and the last tip is down ranking a spell that you learn before level 20 will actually have the, the, the spell will actually have a lower coefficient. So we talked about the coefficients before. Uh, these coefficients are lower on lower rank spells, or I should I say spell ranks that you learned before level 20. So if you are down ranking to stuff, keep this in mind. The the sub level 20 version of the spell probably isn't that worth it. Uh, this is going to be more useful in sort of later phases, especially when we get more bonus healing and start doing more down ranking. And the last section of this guide is going to be on resistances. And this is, this is, yeah, we're, we're deep in the rabbit hole now, but basically I'm going to, I'm going to read this out. Uh, this is, this is a lot of this is due to, or down to how interested you are in this aspect of the game and you can you can go even further there's a whole resistance guide like 25 pages you can read up on if you are interested in it but i'm going to just go over the basics and this is the stuff that actually will apply to you so it's important that you understand why those things apply so there are two kinds of resists in vanilla wow you have resists due to your hit your spell hit and you have resists due to spell pen you probably knew this already and spell pen isn't really a stat in in vanilla but there are items with the equivalent on for example the the trinket from uh from warsong the eye of moam it will be accessible at 60 these kind of things and the this count is obviously the the resists right they both display resist it's in in comparison to for example wrath of the lich king where they will have different messages at level 60 they both say resist so it's hard to distinguish which one has actually happened right but we're going to go into it a little bit more so first of all we've got spell here right 
And if you are PvPing, the majority of the time you're going to be PvPing against an equal level player, right? This means you have 96% chance to hit them. You can remove 3%. You can go up to 99% chance to hit. You can never go to 100. It's impossible. Doesn't The game doesn't allow it. It only allows you to go up to 99%. So this is why before we said you should get 3% hit on gear because this will take you up to 99. This is important. This is going to be very valuable for you because you're going to see a lot of misses or in, at 60, you're going to see resists as a result of this if you don't have 99%. So here we've gonna, we're going to annotate base hit chance 0.96, right? Now, spell penetration, as we said, not officially a stat in TBC. Uh, sorry, until TBC. However, we're going to reference it as spell penetration, and and it's important that you know that this is where you get these this this that basically. And we're gonna we're gonna call this resistance score, and this is just resistance, which is shadow res, fire res, whatever, minus the spell penetration. Um, so say you have thirty shadow res, twenty spell penetration. Obviously, now you've got ten resistance score. Uh, nice easy maths. And then we've got resistance cap as well. Now resistance cap is just the level of the caster multiplied by five. So at level 25, we're going to have a 125 resistance cap. Now, these are important to, to remember for later, what we've, what we've just denoted, these things. So we're going to talk, first of all, about binary and non-binary spells. And this is where these things are going to come into play. You'll see. But basically, binary spells are spells that have a, any non-damage effect, such as a slow, root, stun, or life drain. All right? Examples include fear and frostbolt. Now, Frostbolt is considered binary because it deals both damage and it slows, but the slow portion is the binary portion. If, if it has a binary portion, it's binary. The, the binary spells are called that because they only have two possible outcomes. They either they either land or they don't, right? They hit or they resist. There's no partials, uh, and this is why Frostbolt cannot partial. Now, understanding the difference is important because the way their resistance is calculated varies, right? So for non-binary, these spells roll twice. First, it rolls your hit, rolls your spell hit value and if it says okay that's good you, you pass the spell hit test you, the spell is hitting then after that it does a resistance check and it says okay how much resistance does it have for that spell do we do a partial so for example for mind blast you might hit the mind blast and you might have a load of shadow res and it's like oh no actually it's partial it's only going to hit for you know 50 percent there's two independent roles right the hit roll and the shadow res roll now this is different in binary spells the way that binary spells work is there's only one roll and because of this it means that both of the hit and the spell penetration actually impact that roll and what this means is that you can actually reduce the effect of shadow resistance on binary spells by having more hit so the spell that the talent shadowed focus is actually really really important because this gives you 10 percent hit right so this is going to significantly reduce the number of resists that you actually get from shadow res and this is this is a kind of a big deal a load of gear has shadow res on right now right we're going to have Shadow Proc coming in later. It's going to be Shadow Res Aura from Paladins. There's no doubt going to be more gear with Shadow Res on. So this is something that is very, very, very relevant because our Fear is actually a binary spell. Both Fear and Mind Flay, for that matter. So this is something that is very important to keep in mind, especially if you're playing Shadow, because you will get significantly fewer resists if you run the Shadow Focus talent versus if you don't. For anyone interested in trying it out, this is the calculation. So we've got the, the hit chance of the spell. And if you compare this with the spell hit bonus at the end and without, you'll see the difference. But basically this base hit chance, which is up here, 0 0.96, multiplied by, and then we've got this portion, which is the uh, the calculation for resistance. And you just plug these numbers in, basically. This is the resistance calculation. One minus that. And then you multiply that by the base hit chance to get your, your actual hit value due to spell hit and add it. So this will give you the number and yeah, as you see, this will be significantly improved by this addition here at the end. Now, there are a couple more resist types that I want to talk about. So we've got Dispel Resistance and this is a, a point of much grief for me, but they are there are no Dispel Resistance talents in Vanilla WoW. They get added in TBC and adjusted in Wrath, but there are none in Vanilla WoW. And in the original version of Vanilla WoW, there were no resists. There were no Dispel resists. It's something that got added in in TBC Classic between Season 1 and 2. And for whatever reason, Blizzard decided, oh, it was originally bugged in all of 60, all of 70, and all of 80 originally in WoW. But now we're going to fix it. Now we're going to put it back in. Which is the biggest grief ever because there's plenty of other bugs that they didn't fix. But it is what it is. So this, this, this mechanic is basically saying you hit your Dispel. It won't give you a resist message, 
and you'll see the animation on them, but it won't actually remove anything. And this works on all buffs, all debuffs, everything. And it says here, it's 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 around 10%, but I don't have confirmed documentation on the exact amount. It's quite a, kind of a very under the table mechanic that isn't really that talked about for some reason. But yeah, with further testing, we can kind of figure out the exact percentage, I would say. Uh, but knowing it exists and, and, you know, maybe you dispel a poly off someone and nothing happens, that's what happened. So yeah, knowing it exists is the important thing. So you can react to it accordingly. Uh, it's, it's very devastating if you like go dispel a poly off someone and then go look elsewhere and you look back and they're still polyed five seconds later and you're like, oh, cool. The last part is the resistance talents. And this is things like unbreakable will like we talked about earlier. And this is going to, this is going to affect you on your fear primarily. And this is going to increase the target's chance to resist by 15% on the fear. This, I believe originally in classic vanilla could be reduced through the hit talent but i don't have any documentation again for this it's all hearsay and apparently it got nerfed a couple of patches in so that it no longer can be reduced through shadow focus spell hit penetration nothing works on it and it's just straight 15 percent uh again i don't have evidence or documentation on this so if anyone does would be very very appreciative to see it yeah there's more info on on resists it goes this this, this uh, this resistance guide goes into massive detail. You can see it here. If you are interested in it, I've basically cherry picked the things that are important to you, but you can go down the rabbit hole. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a fun one. Be my guest. Anyway, what have we got? Oh crap. I wasn't supposed to show you this. Okay. That's my bad. Yeah. That's the wrap. Hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully it applied to some people at least. That's, uh, that's, that's the end of the video. Done. Bin. Market. One take.